hi hello everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here i'm natasha i'm an artist from the uk and today i'm going to be sharing my november favorites so these will be all of the different art supplies that i've particularly enjoyed using this month so unlike an art haul where the things are new and i haven't tried them yet a lot of the time <laughs> i'm going to be recommending things that I absolutely love using. So I think let's just get into it because I've got quite a lot to show you today. Um, we're going to start with this. This is the Sendak Artist Roll by Peg and All. I got this from Jackson's. Um, Jackson's have recently started stocking Peg and All products and I was pretty excited when I discovered this because my friend Melanie Chadwick has had one of these for a while and I really like the look of it, especially for travelling because I kind of go backwards and forwards from Surrey to Suffolk. I live in Surrey with my fiancé Dominic, but my family and friends are in Suffolk, so I go backwards and forwards quite a bit and I'm often carrying quite a few art supplies with me and I thought something like this would be great for taking the pencils and pens that I'm currently using the most. So you can fit quite a lot in it, but it rolls up into quite a small little pouch, which is perfect for traveling. So um, yeah, I liked these, um, but you could only get them from the States for ages. And then suddenly the other month, Jackson started stocking them and I was pretty excited. What I did in the end to get this was I partially used my affiliate credit and I also used money from art supplies that I'd sold to my patrons on Patreon. Art supplies that were fantastic, but I just wasn't using. So it could have been things that I tried and they just kind of didn't suit my style or way of working. Or there were some other like watercolours, for example, where I loved them, but the colours just weren't really me. So I sold my secondhand art supplies they have a new home they're now being used which makes me happy and the money i got from those i plowed back into buying this so this is something i really wanted and that i know i'll use so yeah that's how i managed to get this i got it with my affiliate credit and um and with the money from selling my used art supplies so i'm going to show you what i tend to keep in this artist role so it's a really beautiful piece of kit it's kind of made from waxed cotton. Feels a bit like um, a wax jacket, like a barber jacket, which I really like. You can get them in lots of different colors. Um, I decided to choose, I think this was called moss green. Um, I just really liked the green. It did remind me of a wax jacket, so I went for that. I liked the way the green looked with the lovely brown leather strap. Um, everything feels like it's been made to such a high specification. It's a really nice, um, good quality piece of kit. It's something that I would call an investment piece that you would use forever. So um, I'm so pleased that I have this. I don't regret buying it. I am absolutely thrilled with it. Every time I use it, it brings me joy. So there we go. So you have a little zipper pouch bit here. Um, I tend to keep my erasers and Let's just get these out so you can have a look. Erasers and pencil sharpeners. Got another little one in here somewhere. Let's get him out. These are some of my favourite sharpeners, by the way. Um, I love this double hole comb sharpener. And then I've got this little brass bullet sharpener as well. You can get these from Jackson's. I actually got this one from Choosing Keeping, but you can get those from Jackson's now. Um, and these are a couple of my favourite erasers as well. So I tend to keep those in this little zipped pocket. You could keep whatever you liked in there, really. So in this front section here, I tend to put the pencils that I'm using most at the moment. because I have quite a big coloured pencil collection now. So I tend to just edit them down into a little kind of smaller palette. Um, of colours that I'm using most at that particular moment and I pop them in here and as you can see I think it holds about if I got 15 in here but it holds 16 I think and behind here this is the great part so you don't just have these pockets at the front you also have 
quite generous little pockets behind the main part. And this is where I put all of my pit um, artist pens, the brush pens by Faber-Castell. Um, I like to combine these pens with pencil. So I'll do like a base layer of the pen and then work over the top in coloured pencil. So I have quite a few of those there. I have a couple of graphite pencils in there too. And what's great about this is that you can flip this over and when you roll it all up, it means that they don't fall out because they're nice and secure in there. But the other thing, if I can show you, you also have these two fairly large pouches or pockets or whatever you want to call them on the back here. Um, and you can put even more art supplies in there or you can put your sketchbooks or something like that if you have quite a small sketchbook. So this is a fantastic piece of kit. It's one of those things where I think the more you use it and the more kind of used and beaten about it gets, the better it looks. So yeah, the Sendak Artist Roll by Peg and All, it's a real investment piece, but as you can see, it is made beautifully and it's worth the money, I think, personally. If you do a lot of location drawing or you're traveling quite a bit, I mean, it's even great for in the studio if you just want to have all of your current favorite art supplies in it, you can just roll it out on your desk and get to work. It makes finding the art supplies you want to use very easy, um, the colors you want to use. So I would definitely recommend it. So I think what I'm gonna do next is swatch out the pencils and the pens I have in here because these are some of my favorite colors um, at the moment, I think for the season we're in currently, they kind of lean more towards being autumnal rather than wintry. But um, yeah, beautiful colours, so I'm going to share those with you now. So the first one I'm sharing with you is the Derwent Lightfast Spruce Green. I kind of feel like this one is perfect for the current season. I will actually hold these up at the end so you can see them more clearly. Um, I might also zoom in a bit when I'm editing if I can, just so you can have a good look. But yeah, Derwent Lightfast, I really love this range of pencils and this Spruce Green is a particularly lovely dark green. Um, very natural looking, really nice. Um, another one I love is the Luminance. Um, so this is the Caran d'Ache Luminance, for those of you who don't know. Um, my favourite range of pencils. <laughs> this is the Dark Sap Green. This is actually one of my favourite colours ever. And it's kind of similar to the Derwent Lightfast Spruce Green, but you can see it's darker. Um, a darker and I would say slightly cooler green too. They're just such beautiful colours. Um, both of these ranges of pencils are really nice. I would definitely recommend them. Okay, the next one is something a little bit brighter. This is the Malachite Green. This is a Luminance. So I love how this looks with those darker greens. I'm actually swatching on a little scrap of watercolour paper um, that I had lying around. 
so it's quite a textured surface I'm swatching on um, but yeah the malachite green looks really good with this particular color palette um, the Derwent drawing green shadow is also another lovely green very natural looking whoops I've sharpened these to really really fine points so I think I'm pressing a little bit hard um, I'm a bit rough with my pencils really I think but this is kind of a grey green and um, yeah looks lovely with those other ones and also really good for this time of year the greens I've chosen are definitely the type of greens that I'm seeing in the landscape here at the moment so this one is the Faber Castell Polychromos Earth Green this has long been a favourite of mine um, these were the first pencils I bought back in 2017 or 18, something like that. So I've had like a little collection of Faber-Castells for several years now. And this was one of the ones I picked up when I first bought them. And I love it because it's just such a natural, slightly warmer green. But those are the greens that I'm seeing when I go out and I'm walking in this kind of autumn going into winter type of landscape here in the UK. Okay we've got some real autumnal colours coming up. So the Derwent Lightfast Dark Honey, this is a new one for me and I just love the natural look of it. It's sort of slightly rusty, slightly orange. <laughs> Um, how do I describe this? Well, I guess Dark Honey, they've described it for me, haven't they? Dark Honey is probably the perfect um, description of this pencil. It does kind of look like the Manuka honey I have. So the next one is Derwent Lightfast um, Dark Orange. So this one is also a really nice autumnal colour. Do you see how this palette is coming together now and it's sort of really looking like like the current landscape if you're here in the UK you'll probably know what I mean so that looks really good with the dark honey let's just blow away those little dusty bits and the next autumnal color is autumn leaf and this is the Holbein artists colored pencil So all of these just vary a little bit, but I kind of feel like they work so well together. Oh, that one's got quite a few dusty bits. I think it's because I'm working on slightly textured paper. It's kind of um, making them a little bit more dusty than they would normally be right so i wanted to choose a slightly brighter orange so this is the cornelian luminance pencil and i like that it's a brighter orange and i think i may have shared this before and said the same thing but it's a brighter orange but still natural it's not like an artificial super bright orange it's got that kind of slightly earthy feeling even though it's brighter just so nice right the next one is a polychromos pencil and it's green gold so this is a really lovely greenish yellow i'm seeing a lot of these kind of colors on the trees at the moment they're sort of holding on to the last of their leaves. So this one is the Holbein Artists Sand. This is a really nice neutral colour. And it goes really well with those as well. Um, yeah, so that's a good one. Good one to have if you want a nice neutral and the Derwent Lightfast taupe 
this reminds me oops that one's breaking a little bit as well this reminds me of um like when the heather comes out in the autumn when you get that lovely sort of soft purple or violet kind of colour very earthy with that sort of violet tone to it and the final three are greys and blues so we have let's do this one first this is the Payne's Grey 60% luminance pencil this is one of my most used pencils I find this a really great colour to have in any palette really and next to it the Payne's Grey so again my old favourite always making an appearance in every palette <laughs> But just so versatile and um, I can't imagine not having at least the Payne's Grey pencil. But I love to have the Payne's Grey 60% as well because it's just a little bit bluer and a little bit lighter. And just gives you a few more options really. And finally, I'm going to include the Derwent Light Fast Mid Ultramarine. This is quite a new pencil for me. But I love this soft blue and it reminds me of when we have sunny, oops, <laughs> when we have sunny days um, at the moment, when we actually do have sunny days. <laughs> We've had a lot of rainy days, I have to say. Um, but the sky looks this colour and it just contrasts so beautifully with the autumn colours and the greens and the oranges and yellows and so on. Okay, let me just get rid of that. Shake that off a little bit. So here are um, the pencils that I'm really loving at the moment. Um, that's a really nice little colour palette for this time of year, I think. Hopefully you can see that quite clearly. I've been gradually expanding my collection of these pens this year because I found I love using them in mixed media and um, yeah I just really like the colour range I think they're beautiful they're quite subtle so I like to use them as a base layer so that I can then work over the top and it kind of gives the work a little bit of extra texture and also a bit more depth of colour too. You can layer so many different materials over the top of them. So I'm going to share my current favourite colours that kind of go with this pencil colour palette. So the first one is the Warm Grey, number one. This is a soft brush. So most of these are just the brush pens. I think I have a couple here that are the soft brush. Um, so let's, where should we do this? Should we just start up here? So this is very, very subtle. And it's a very warm grey. I would say it is actually more like, it reminds me slightly of a Liquitex colour called Parchment. So it's just very neutral, a really nice base to work on top of. And so the other warm greys we have here, let's kind of pull the warm greys out. Is that cold grey? Yeah, I think that's cold grey too. That's cold grey. Yeah, I've got a couple more warm greys here. Okay, this is warm grey number three. And this is just the normal brush pen. So you can see that's a slightly firmer tip there. But these all make really nice base colours. And this one is the warm grey number four. So I'll show you the other greys that I have here. I like that they do cold greys and warm greys. So this is cold grey number three. So you see that's much more blue toned than the other ones. Sorry if you can hear banging in the background, it's just the studio wood burner. Um, I have it on almost all the time now because <laughs> it's so cold. Um, right, this is cold grey number four. So it's gonna be a bit darker. 
And this is cold grey number six. So this is really quite a dark grey. Really nice colour. I like to have a variety of greys because it's just a colour I use a lot in my work. So you could combine them with different colours and it would just give a bit of extra depth to the layering, which is quite nice. So this is the other soft brush pen I have. I don't know whether I can get this in just a normal brush pen. I think I've only ever had it in the soft brush, but it's light indigo and it's one of my favorite colors they do. Because look how soft and subtle that is. Just a really lovely one. If you like to do kind of subtle skies, you like them to be slightly blue, but not kind of in your face blue, that's a really good one to have, light indigo. Um, Let's have a look at these two greens. Because these kind of go well with the greens up here, I think. So this one is earth green. So kind of like the pencil, but um, slightly different. The pencil's slightly darker, isn't it? And this one is chromium green opaque. So another nice natural green, quite a warm green. They go really nicely with those greens. They're a nice addition to those. So let's get onto these warmer colours. This is apricot. Very pretty colour. And this is beige red. You see how well these are going with the pencils. And this one is cinnamon, that's slightly darker, a little bit more orange. They're really gorgeous colours. And then we have a terracotta. A slightly brighter orange glaze. Where am I going to do these ones? <laughs> Running out of space. So yeah, great for autumn, these ones. We have Kaput Mortem. Lovely rich brown. And finally, we have Green Gold. Which is kind of similar to that one there. So there we go. Not the neatest swatches ever, but I'm going to hold these up so you can have a bit of a better look at them. And that is a really nice colour palette, I think, for this time of year. Um, I will try to remember to list all of the different colours in the description beneath the video. So if you want to go there, hopefully I've remembered to do that. <laughs> if I haven't, leave a comment nudging me and I will do it um, rather than trying to write down the names on this piece of paper. OK, we're going to move on to the next thing, which I think will be the watercolours that I'm really loving at the moment. Over the past month I've tried three new watercolours and all three of them have quickly become some of my favourite colours I've ever tried and I'm using them quite a lot in my work. So they've gone into a new palette that I have put together. Um, it's my night palette. I'm just going to show you actually. I'll show you very quickly, <laughs> not that you'll be able to see much. Have I got the swatch card here? Because a lot of the colours in that look quite dark, don't they? But that's the little swatch chart. Um, I talked to my patrons about this palette and I swatched it out properly for them. It's um, one for my night landscapes. It's just a nice little portable palette with all of the colours that I'm currently loving for night landscapes. But we're not going to look at that today. We're just going to look, let just pop that over there. We're just going to look at these three colours. So it all started with this one. So this 
was suggested to me by one of my patrons. She knew how much I love Payne's Grey in general and said that this one was a particularly good one. So I was intrigued enough to give it a go. I always like to try a new Payne's Grey. Um, Payne's Grey does vary over different brands, across different brands. And I have found so many beautiful ones. They're all beautiful in their own way. So I was keen to try this one, seeing as um, it came highly recommended. While I was on Jackson's, I also decided to add to my cart Bohemian Green Earth. This looked like a really interesting colour. I'd seen it on the Jackson site a while ago and I had added it to my favourites, but I hadn't bought it yet because they're quite pricey. But I had a bit of affiliate credit and I thought if I was going to try the Payne's Grey, I would at least try another one of their colours too. And I also added to my cart this one. It's a Sennelia colour and it's called Sennelia Grey. It reminds me a little bit of Davies Grey, which is um, a whole by. I'm sure there are other Davies Greys, but the one I'm thinking of is the Holbein Artist Watercolour version, which I really love um, because it's actually just this gorgeous muted grey green. And this one looks similar, um, but not identical. So I was kind of keen to just try it. I have a couple of Sennelier paints. I don't have many of their paints, but I have a couple of their watercolours in forest green and greenish umber. And I love both of them. So I thought, be quite fun to try another one. I'm going to swatch these out for you. You're going to see why I have quickly become obsessed with these colours this month. So I think first let's try the Payne's Grey. I've just been really impressed with the core paints. I really don't know whether I'm saying that correctly. Let me know in the comments below because it is a bit annoying when people mispronounce things, isn't it? But um, you'll see the strength of this Payne's Grey is really quite something. You don't need very much at all. Look at that. So inky. Inky blue. So I'm just going to do a really long swatch for each of these, I think. But look at the depth of that colour, the richness of it. I mean, even that tiny bit <laughs> that I squeezed out of the tube is way too much, really, for this swatch. I'm just going to look at that. So beautiful. So it's quickly become one of the favourite Payne's Greys I have. I mean, I have quite a few different watercolours um, and acrylics <laughs> and pencils. But yeah, amongst my watercolour paint greys, this has truly become one of my favourites. Um, the one that I always recommend is the Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolour Paints Grey. That's a beautiful one. It's slightly more, so slightly more blue than this one. I mean, this one is blue, but it's got this kind of real inky depth to it. Um, I kind of want to lift off. A little bit here so you can see you see how little I needed to use to get such an amazing depth of color but it is a truly beautiful color and I'm really impressed with the formulation of the core paints um, just so beautiful so yeah, I'd recommend that if you're looking for a Payne's Grey. I mean, they're a little bit pricey in the UK. I think, I'm trying to remember, was that one around £10? And this one was a bit more? The Bohemian Green Earth was more, I think. I mean, you could say that a lot of other watercolours are around the same kind of price point, I guess. But I think they're, if I'm correct in saying this, I think these ones are cheaper in the States. Okay, so I'm going to show you this beautiful colour. As you know, I'm kind of collecting lots of greens at the moment. Um, so I thought this one might be a nice addition to my collection. By the way, I have decided, I think, you know how some people collect, I don't know, handbags, shoes, Star Wars figures, <laughs> whatever it is you collect. Um, 
I think I've become a collector of watercolours. I just can't get enough of them. A while back I said I wasn't going to buy any more watercolours and that you were to tell me off if, oh, whoops, <laughs> if I bought any more watercolours. But um, don't tell me off, please, because, I don't know, they just bring me so much joy. They inspire me. I'm using them all the time in my work. I'm going to show you a few pieces, actually, that I've recently um, painted in watercolour. I don't want to show everything before the shop update, so I'm going to just choose a few and share them with you. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I'm just finding them so inspiring and I'm thinking that actually I might be a bit of a collector of watercolours. Maybe this is what I collect. <laughs> the thing is, I only want to collect the colours that I'm really going to use as well because I don't want them sitting there not being used as I, I think mentioned earlier in this video I sold quite a few of my watercolours actually the other week to my patrons the ones I wasn't using let's just see if we can oh dear I've completely ruined my little swatches here haven't I oh well um Yes, I sold the ones I wasn't using, the ones that don't seem to suit my kind of preferred colour palette. Yeah, and it just felt really good to know that the ones I wasn't using have gone to a new home where they will be used. And I can just concentrate on using the ones that I have decided to keep. And I know that I will use them because they're my kind of colours. So I don't feel like they're going to be wasted because I'm really keen not to just keep amassing a lot of stuff for the sake of it. You probably don't know this, I have spoken about this to my patrons, but I am offered several times a week art supplies from different companies to promote to you on this YouTube channel. And I have turned virtually everyone down because I've decided that I would rather recommend materials to you that I'm actually using and that I'm loving and that are quality materials rather than just accepting random art supplies from around the world um, that I probably wouldn't have chosen myself, that I wouldn't have chosen to go out and buy. So I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful in that way. And um, so, yes, I think I'm always going to have a weakness for art supplies. I'm always going to have a weakness for watercolours, I think, in particular. And I think there's nothing wrong with collecting beautiful art supplies, but you have to make sure that you're going to use them as well, which is what I'm trying to do. But anyway, look at the beautiful colours here. This Bohemian Green Earth could actually be even darker than this. It's going to be a really, really dark olivey green. And then when it washes out, it becomes this sort of lighter, brighter, more yellow green and it really is quite beautiful. I'm just going to, I think what I'm going to do with this one is just squeeze a little bit out onto the paper here and I'll show you what this one looks like. This is such a lovely colour. I'm very into sagey kind of greens at the moment. Um, Grey greens, muted greens and this is really lovely. So it's really quite opaque when you apply it um, in the mass tone. But you can wash it out into a lovely transparent pale green grey. Really nice. I'm loving all of these for my um, current night landscapes. I'm very into using greens in my night landscapes now. I didn't used to. Gosh, I'm, I don't know why I can't swatch today. Something wrong with me. <laughs> I'm managing to spray water everywhere. But there we go. I'll just hold that up closely to the camera. So you can have a look. You can probably see why I'm loving these colours so much. I think that paints grey looks amazing with greens. Um, so there. 
my three new watercolours that I am currently loving this month. So I'm going to go and find some artwork and um, yeah, I'll show you what I've been working on. So here's a good example of where I've used the Payne's Grey for the sky. The hill is actually the Sennelia Greenish Umber, which is another colour I am pretty much obsessed with at the moment. But this foreground here is actually the Sennelia Grey. Such a lovely, subtle colour. And um, yeah, I just think that the Payne's Grey, as I said, goes really well with greens and they're working particularly well for these night landscapes at the moment. So that's something I did with some of those colours. I'm just going to show you actually um, a couple of other little watercolours I've been working on. So all of these will be in the upcoming shop update which is happening quite soon. Um, so if you want to sign up to my mailing list I'll pop a link in the description and you'll be notified of that. For this little bird, I used mainly watercolour and then did the leaves on top in Winsor & Newton Designers gouache. And he has some little highlights and details in FW acrylic ink. Pretty good for doing the details like that. With this little bird, I also used a combination of watercolour gouache and acrylic ink. So it's mainly in watercolour um, the leaves were added afterwards with the traditional gouache, the Winter Newton designer's gouache. And then I added some more details and the raindrops with white acrylic ink. So I used the FW acrylic ink for that. So yeah, it's a bit of a combination that one. And I filmed it, I filmed the process for Patreon. And in the same video, I also shared my new watercolour palette that I quickly showed you earlier but I swatched out all of the colours and explained why I'd um, included them in the palette and so on but um, yeah there's just a few of the watercolour paintings I've been working on recently. Another medium I've been using a lot this month is acrylic gouache. I always seem to use this a lot but I'm really into it at the moment and so I thought it might be fun just to show you a few of my current favourite colours. So I'm going to quickly swatch these um, we have a mixture of the Turner Acryl Gouache and the Holbein Acrylic Gouache here. We'll start with this one. So this is the Turner and it is from the Japanese range. So these are slightly textured to kind of mimic traditional Japanese paints, I believe. Um, so they have a slightly kind of sandy texture, some more than others. And this one is the Japanese Beige. And um, I'm just really liking this as one of a, a few nice neutral colours that I use. And I'm finding I'm using quite a lot of these kind of colours during the autumn. I'll hold these up at the end so you can see them more clearly. So the next one we'll swatch is the Japanese yellow brown. Oh, see that one has a much sort of runnier consistency. They do vary a bit. It's a lovely colour that kind of reminds me of like raw sienna, a little bit like yellow ochre, that type of colour. Again, really nice for autumn, for autumn landscapes. Just such a lovely, rich, earthy colour. I love it. So I think next, shall we try this one? Maybe we'll go for this one. This is Jean Brillant um, and this is the Holbein. I've been using the Holbein acrylic gouache for years, so that's a bit of a favourite of mine. But um, last year I bought some Turners for the first time. I really like those too and so now I tend to use both together and they seem to work well together. I haven't had any problems combining the two in the same painting. So there you go, another lovely autumnal colour. And next we have something that's known as strong orange. <laughs> this is also one of their Japanese colours from the Turner range. 
really like how these are looking together. This is a very nice earthy orange, not super bright. It's really quite textured, this one, actually. Beautiful. Oops. And then finally, my well-used tube of Holbein Burnt Sienna. This is one of the colours I always have. Um, I tend to use it a lot. You can see that it's actually split there and we've got some paint coming out of the side. This poor tube of paint, it's like it's been through a mangle. So this is a lovely rich reddish brown. And kind of a staple colour that I always have in my palette. Some other colours I'm loving this month are the Ash Yellow, Holbein. I'll swatch that down here. Now I always think of this as being a bit more of a green really than a yellow. And I kind of feel like it's a good autumn green. I love all of the ash colours they do. They do an ash blue, an ash green, an ash rose I think it is. Um, and this ash yellow. So nice. And looks beautiful with the real autumnal oranges and rusts. Now a grey of theirs I really like and use a lot of is the neutral grey number four. It's just a really lovely, very dark grey. Now, of course, you can mix up your own greys. Um, I just really love this colour in particular. And just to have it at hand when I need it and not having to mix up exactly the same shade each time is very, very useful, <laughs> especially if you're in a bit of a hurry. So if you're looking for a good dark grey, the neutral grey number four is really nice. I also love the Turner Greyish Blue. This is just from their normal range. This isn't the Japanese range. But it's pretty much the perfect shade of dark blue grey. And I'm using it a lot. I like it for backgrounds. Um, I'll show you actually in a moment um, some of the work I've been making with the acrylic gouache. Oh, it's quite a big swatch, isn't it? <laughs> and um, I always love the misty colours. So we have misty blue. This is one that I've used for absolutely ages now. And I find it is the perfect colour for a nice subtle background. So if I want to paint a little bird, for example, and I just want something that's a lovely soft colour as the background. Or if you want to do a blue sky, but have it look kind of subtle and muted just so beautiful just such a gorgeous color and a really useful one to have in your palette again this one also looks really nice with darker blue grays it looks good with the oranges and looks fantastic with greens as well by the way so finally for today we're going to have a look at the misty green again i love it because it's just such a subtle beautiful color very natural looking. So there we go. Some of my current favourite Holbein colours and Turner colours 
although it was hard to choose because there are so many good ones. So I'll hold these up closely um, so you can have a look at them. And um, yeah, then we will have a look at some of the artwork I've created. I've been enjoying working on these little miniatures. So here's one called Dreaming of Autumn. It's actually Dreaming of Autumn 3 because I did a couple in this series for my last shop update. I love working on all of these little patterns and details. So yeah, this is painted in acrylic gouache with just a little bit of acrylic ink for some of the details, the white details. So this one's called On the Cusp of Winter. So it's at the point we're at um, right now, really, where autumn is changing, it's becoming winter, but you've still got a few of the leaves on the trees. So yeah, this is just giving you an idea of some of the pieces I paint with acrylic gouache. And this little bird here is part of my series, The Night Bird Watches and Waits. And this was also done in acrylic gouache with a little bit of acrylic ink for the details. So there you go. There's a few more pieces just to kind of demonstrate how I use these materials. I almost forgot to share this with you. This is a palette by Sugar House Ceramic Company. And these are really good if you're working with acrylic gouache. Um, with acrylic gouache you really need to use a ceramic palette rather than a plastic one. If you use a plastic one the paint gets stuck to the palette and it's a nightmare to get off. With this I just soak it in water for a few minutes and it kind of lifts off. So I'm loving using these palettes at the moment for the acrylic gouache but they're also really good for watercolour too if you wanted to use them for that. I haven't used them for acrylic but I think you can. Um, you could certainly use them for traditional gouache as well. So yeah, would really recommend these palettes. Not only are they beautiful, but they seem to work really well as well. So the last thing I wanted to share with you today was this pouch by Peg and All. So the same people who made the Sendak Artist Roll, they do a whole range of different pencil cases and accessories. And um, I saw this one, this is in the colour coal, so it's quite a dark sort of charcoal grey colour, I guess you would call that. And um, it's made out of the same material as the artist roll, so this kind of waxed cotton. And what I really liked about this little pouch is the fact that it opens at the top rather than along the side. So when your pens are in there, Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> they um, are easily accessible because you can see, as I'm using these Micron Fineliner pens, there are a variety of different sizes. And so they have the size of the nib on the top of the pen lid. So when they're all in there like that, I can just see really easily which pen I'm looking for. And um, so yeah, I got this little pouch and I decided to keep all of my Micron fine liners in there. I also have a couple of other brands of pen in there, but they're mainly the Microns. I'm really loving these for my black and white ink drawings. So I have them in a variety of sizes and um, I'll just show you quickly some of the little ink drawings that I've been working on. So these are a little series of landscapes. Um, and I am really enjoying working on these. They're just such a fun thing to work on. I've called them Wandering Through the Landscape. That's the name of the series. Because when they're viewed all together, it's kind of like when you go through a landscape and you see all of the different views of it as you're walking through it. But there you go. Okay, 
that is the end of my November favourites. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to get back to you. I try to answer as many comments as I possibly can. I can't always get round to all of them, but I read them and I like them. So if I give you a heart, you know I've read it. And um, yeah, it's just a way of acknowledging really that I've read your comment and I'm so appreciative of all the comments, all the suggestions, all the recommendations, um, all the support and everything that you give me. So <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then maybe consider subscribing. It's obviously free and I post regular videos about art and art supplies and my life as an artist. Um, okay, I'm going to go now. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you again soon in another video. Take care and have a good December.